All right. So again, what is music publishing? It's the business of the music business. Where the money is made. Where people are trying to get your publishing. That is the most valuable thing you have. Is the actual ownership of that copyright, being able to exploit that copyright. We're doing business the music publishing. Quick lecture on that. Earlier, we went back to a blues and G, 12 bar blues that Rebecca was showing us, uh, doing some harmonica parts that he came up with. And then Eddie did his lyrics too, I think, so they kind of collaborated. All right. All right, so music publishing, what is it? It is the business of music, of the music business. Where the lawyers hang out and where the money is made. And you're gonna find out more about where that, those money sources are. And again, that's me doing scoring at UCLA Extension when I did the film school live orchestra. Um, music publishing. It is the main source of income for the music business aside from record sales. It actually includes record The publishing income can be extremely lucrative. A lot of lawyers are music publishers. I talk about lawyers a lot because they really are. Uh, it's very important to have a good lawyer. It's very important to, um, um, but realize that they're, um, you know, a lot of the music publishers are lawyers. They figure out, oh my God, I can make a lot of money here. How do they get paid by the artists? Or do they get money out of their song? They, they figure out how to collect from the various uses of the song. Okay? They collect on behalf of others. That's what a publishing company does. And they help you to exploit that copyright. So there's various uses for a song. Um, once, especially if it's a hit song. Being a hit song in itself is lucrative. But then there's other uses once people want that song for television or film or whatever. Is part of the job to like put you on the radio and stuff like that? Or no? Um that the promotions, the record company normally does that for the promotion for you. They do the, the uh, marketing and distribution. Okay. And if you're an indie label, you would do like a distribution deal, a press and in P and B deal with an indie distributor. Independent distributor, and they would get you in the in. They would uh, get your record. You know, they have their own indie promotion. You partner with that. So like they, they would put you like on tour. Right? Well, it's possible. Depends. If you have a big, if you're with a major record label, then you could probably get it. Definitely get a tour that they promote and market. And some indie labels have a lot of money too, but they're doing it on a smaller scale. Isn't indie like, like the name? Independent. Independent. Huh? Yeah, like indie, independent. Yes. Well, more so. Yes, everything is. A lot of people are independent artists now because of the internet. They can do some things directly, but it's very difficult. With it's saturated, it's very difficult to reach your audience. So. You have to be very, very um, creative in, in finding ways to do that to reach your audience. And that's some of the things that I cover in my music business book. So publishing is the main source of income for the music business. It's lucrative. It's a lot of lawyers, and um, they are the music publishers or handle the licensing of your music. Um, they attend NIDM which is a conference in Europe that where, where um, catalogs of music are sold back and forth. For instance, um, Michael Jackson owned the Beatles catalog. That means their whole catalog, all their songs, all their songs. How did he do that? He bought it. <laughs> he, got, he got bucks. And, and it was for sale. Um, I remember when, years ago, when um, Earth, Wind & Fire's Maurice White 
ran into money trouble. He sold his catalog for several million. But and then and then you would hear the songs a lot in commercials because whoever bought it out was like, okay, now let's license this stuff. Let's make some money off it. I remember there was a group called. Um, well, there is a group called War, and they did a record company record deal with a, a company called Avenue Records. I ran into that person. He was a lawyer. And um, I met him at a music publishing course that was teaching about independent label. And he had an independent label. He was there to talk about independent label. He had just signed that the um, the group war, but also he had bought their catalog. So then you started hearing a lot of the music from war, and then later on you saw them on PBS. It was a big tour, a PBS special, huh? Yes, absolutely. He exploited. He he um, had enough money to pay to pay them what they wanted for their catalog, and then to exploit. It. And I, I, they still make money as a songwriter. Yeah, they just don't own the publishing. Of it. No, they gave up the publishing, the complete publishing, 100. Do you think that's? Uh, but there's still a writer's share. Do you think that's a good idea? No, I think you should do a co-publishing deal, and you should have an advance. Money's up front, and you should have a very good contract negotiated by a, con by a great lawyer. To get your own lawyer? Yes. And, uh, but a lot of times, the publishing companies may not be paying you what you're owed. You have to do things like audits and things like that. It's really, it's really a tough business. It's tougher than any other business in so entertainment. Like for an indie producer, what would you think is the most important part? If you're a producer, yeah. that means you haven't written the song. Not necessarily. You, you are a producer. That means you um, produce an artist or an act or a band and you can either bring them through your independent production companies and your company is signed to the record label or they're signed to the record label. And the company, either the record company pays you as a producer. Um, okay. And so they, most artists will have a, a production budget that the record company gives them. Well, either it's going to come to you directly as an artist or you're going to sign through the, the production company. So that's off the subject, but that's a whole nother area. But reg in general, producers get in advance, you know, a nice lump sum for producing records, depending on how popular they are, how experienced they are, whether they have hits in the past, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then even baby producers will get an advance up front usually. Mm -hmm. And um, then they're paid every record sale from the very beginning. The difference between a producer and an artist is the artist only gets paid after the record company has recouped all of its costs. And they may not recoup. But I mean, they have their own perks, other than being like a star. Well, they get to be the star, and you get to run all over the country yes. and tour. You can make some money off touring if you get I mean, a tour. I think that's also like a really good perk. Yeah, if like you get a tour. That. But it's a lot of work. Oh, of but a producer produces the album, does that session yeah. over that whatever time it takes to do the album, yeah. and the money starts running in as soon as they make the first record sale. Mm -hmm. okay. Plus, they've got an advance in it ahead of time mm -hmm. that is not recouped. They don't have to recoup. Sure. They got a producer's fee, basically. Okay. Plus, 3% of each record sold. Uh -huh. Okay, No recouping necessary. They get paid? So they're getting paid right away. The artist is still waiting yeah. to um, get all the promotional dollars. I mean, they, give, they give them money for like um, not necessarily. They should be already know having their stuff together. You should be have a, have a production studio or have access to a studio. They're gonna pay for the, the, the budget itself, and you can do you can budget things yourself. You know, if you're receiving a budget, it's supposed to include all your recording costs, studio time, and everything, and then pay yourself too. Okay. Um, so the problem is when the there's some problems with that when you, if 
you don't sign directly as an artist to the artist to the record company, that producer can run off with all the money. <laughs> Do you like a cheap album? Like a cheap album? Yeah, an album that's not they have not spent towards it. They they've done you know they haven't done a real thorough production. Right. Yeah. So you, you have to be careful, or they might just run off. Period. You could be your own producer, right, and record you your could. own, and just yeah. they'll give you the advance to whatever. It'll be the same thing. Your name could be a producer, and you just like produce it. And like, if you guys like it, like the, like a band, for example, then it's all yours. Yeah. There's yeah. no pain. But if you want to get someone like like someone that's the Rolling Stones to do your album, or somebody someone did Michael Jackson album, you want him to be in your or her to be in your in your record because they have a they have a background. Name. They have yeah. a name that you can trust. They them. they got a lot of their they're probably going to have a high fee. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because I remember when Babyface and uh, L.A. Reef uh, were really hot, they got like, I remember a multi-million dollar production deal. Mm. And um, it was negotiated by a guy that was pretty high up in the industry, Clarence Avon. But I remember when they, I, used, I had done some work, temp work at their music business management office, which was Turner Management, who helped them start their record label, Face Records, in uh, Georgia. When, so they were still in Beverly Hills before they moved to Georgia. Mm -hmm. But they all relocated there. And um, and um, they were getting checks, like advances of 85000 for one song. So yeah. So that's so just a fee. So whatever, the, fee. so whatever the producer gets for the advance, the producer has to pay nothing back, right? No, nothing. That's his, fee. that's his fee. And then when it comes to like selling records, the record company gets that, that, and then the artist gets paid, but yeah. the producer gets paid already. The producer continues to get paid off every record, record. sold. All one is being sold. Three percent. Three percent. The rest of all sold. record sales of mechanic of the, of the, the mechanical. So it has to be a really good album for the artist to get paid. Right? It has to be good, yes. And most don't recoup. So yeah. most most records are in loss, according to the record industry. And then they drop you, or they actually get to the A lot of times price. you have one shot. Okay. Sometimes they'll give you more than one. Like, you might just get one single. If you didn't sell, they won't even release any more singles on your album. That's how it used to be. Good business. And then, yeah. And sometimes um, they might really be invested and they want to put a whole lot of money behind you and they're going to push it and they're going to put a lot of money and make sure that they, they pay people to play it that it's you know you're you've done videos all over the place and you know if, if they're going to make it a success sometimes the sort of something similar to what you said about they give you like a four-year contract or something where you can't get out of your contract when you sign whatever record label major record label uh -huh. and you said that if if you don't sell well, for example, it's just okay. Like you still owe the company money. You still gotta, you gotta like, add another album. You know what I mean? Because you're in a contract. Because they want to keep keep you. Oh, well, and yeah. then you owe them more money. And then you still gotta pay them. So after like the third album, you finally start getting paid as an artist. And to some artists that went through that, I know a band that went through that. Their third album, they got paid already, but they couldn't get out of the contract. They couldn't like leave their company because they're in contract. Yeah, That's because it's usually seven years. Seven years. Yeah, it's a very bad when you're a baby artist when you're first starting. <laughs> you there's just no fair, unless you're like, I mean like, unless the bidding there's a bidding war for you uh -huh. at different record labels. Then you have more leverage. But baby baby acts usually don't have much leverage. You just better have a good lawyer to negotiate best they can with what it is. But it's usually pretty standard, and it's really a, a, a not a good. It's not good. It's really not. <laughs> you, you can actually see the background of a lawyer, right? His background. Each lawyer. You have the access, right? As every person. To see what his lawyer did. Or you just don't get anybody. Just like that. You know well, what I mean? You, you would... Because um, they're good or bad lawyers. That's just, the risk. Yeah, you try to find lawyers that are with um, some, some big firms. Or they're just really well known. And they have really great clients. Try to get that, and it doesn't matter if they have stars or whatever. They still have to have some new acts they want to break in or whatever. They might have reasons. Oh, sure. And it's good. Oh. Younger, 
younger younger art younger lawyers joining the firm work with the baby actors. And it's also good if that lawyer is a music fan and so like in your yeah, job. Yeah, if they music. love your music, yeah. then they're gonna really be, you know, they're gonna do a great job. Okay. Sometimes they don't respect the music, but they're just about money or whatever. I don't know. I had that happen with me when I met with um, Gang Tyron Brown, which is the one that wrote that thick book. Mm -hmm. Passman is one of the, the guys that wrote that. He's like one of the top lawyers at this, that firm. But they had a young guy named Rose, whatever. But he was not excited about my music, and I knew it. And I was like, but he was like, okay, yeah, we're in six. But not listening. So for me, I'm like, no. I need a person who respects me and respects what we're doing. Otherwise, that's it. He doesn't understand. Find someone who really believes in you, even your lawyers, that likes what, what you're doing. <laughs> respects it. So, yeah. They, so Cannes, France is where they sell the catalog back and forth. The, that's the big collections of songs that people have that are valuable. Mm. I have a question. Yes. So will they do the catalog of some of those personal songs? Big, good, Like, 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 Well, your catalog is everything you wrote. Yeah. I mean, that you, but some people have catalogs that have been, the songs are um, covers. They've already been done. They've oh. already been released. They've been hit or whatever. And some things might not be released or whatever. Or something, uh -huh. yeah. It yeah. just depends. Whatever they decide is they're going to present for sale or for licensing or whatever. So what are you saying? Because I have like a catalog myself of hundred, you know, at least, I don't know, last I checked, maybe 250 songs. But it doesn't mean that they're all released. Some have been released. Yeah, that's what I was trying to ask. But yeah. Like maybe some songs are like... Some songs are what? Private. Are what? Private. Yeah, some things you might not, you're not, might not have let people hear. I remember Prince, speaking of Prince, we saw the video of Prince the concert earlier. He, he used to have like tons of songs that nobody's ever heard. Mm -hmm. you no know, ideas. He could just pull from, you know, and you could just, you know. But you have so many songs. The way I, I mean, I don't let any idea get away from me. Uh -huh. So I'm going to put it down some kind of way, even if, it's, even if I just hum it. That's why I was saying, you know, asking Angel, what's the melody of your song, you know, the part? Because, you know, it's like, yeah, you know. Even if you worked with loops, do you remember what that loop was? You know what I'm saying? The, you know, the, how the part. So, um, but humming it, humming it, just get it down, you know? Just get it down. And then later you can put it down. You can actually record it. Do you carry like a recorder? Yeah. I always have some kind of something. My phone, anything. Yeah. It just comes up. Yeah, I don't, because you never know when the ideas are coming to you. You know, I've been before, but I've never, I, I haven't really put much, more, much like, enthusiasm into writing for the starting part. Like, they come up to me, but I don't do um, a good thing. And sometimes I'm in my car just listening to stuff, or the sounds of around me, just any sound might give me an idea. It just comes, and you just, oh, i got to get this down. Like a little melody. Like if you can't remember, you try to jot down notes to help you remember or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Like a melody, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you own the rights, music publishing, if you own the rights to a song, album, or a catalog of songs, you, the publisher or owner, control the copyright, and you have the right to do all sorts of foreign song covers in various countries as well as licensing deals for songs in film and television and various multimedia uses, etc. Radio play, play pays you, um, club play, play club, club pay, play pays you. Um, they have foreign rights that are not so that are not paid here. Like if your if your music is played in a theater in Europe, that that's um, paid for. Okay, but that's but in our country we don't have that. 
Does YouTube sell? Does YouTube pay viewers? What ask? It's not paying. No. No, right? Because I heard no. said that you do pay, but very, very little. No. They don't pay you nothing. The only way you make money on YouTube is ads. So it's really, huh? If it's copyrighted, if there's something copyrighted, they have to pay. Well, just playing it, playing it on YouTube is you're if not it, selling it. So if it gets like many hits, then it's yours. But they might. Tell them that they don't have a right to use it for any commercial use. Yeah, yeah. And they can just use it only to for educational purposes or to be promotional purposes. Yeah. But no, as far as I know, YouTube does not um, pay anything for songs. No, you don't do that. But sales. Like different sales outlets, like iTunes or Spotify, I don't know all these. Spotify pays you very little, that's what they I'm saying. They pay you like very little. So music publishing income sources. The sources are, okay, there's mechanical royalties, okay? That's the record sales. And there's a percentage of that. Each record sold, you're paid a certain percent, okay? Uh, that percent went up, I think, to nine cents per week. Yeah. It used to be 6.25. It's mechanical, you mean um, that's not CDs, right? That's um, yes. That's yeah, CDs only? That's, that's all it is? CDs, it's albums. Right there. Where? CDs, digital downloads, ringtones, and streaming after What about the CDs? Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that's what it is. 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 Well, this is from record companies actually pressing your... Yeah, pressing the songs. But if you're doing whatever their rates are, I don't know what Spotify and iTunes is. For I mean, you can find them online. Yeah, we could do that. There's a graphic. I, I did it. Just look up a uh, streaming rates or something like that on on YouTube. Uh, the title the title gives the most. I'm not <laughs> YouTube gives like the least. Okay, so we're talking about. The digital downloads, the ringtones, and all that stuff, streaming, have different mechanical rates. And you can find them at this website right here. Copyright, the Copyright Office actually has a, a link right here. Um, so there's another thing called synchronization royalties. That's for like the use of the song in films and television and commercials. And that's something that ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC collect for you. So you need to join them as a writer member and as a publisher member, either one of those performing arts agencies in the U.S. Also video games? Yeah. Oh, okay. Isn't there like a booming industry for just video games? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It's very lucrative. And the performing rights agencies have other, they, they, are, they are all over the world. So there's some that are like in... Italy, I remember it was called C I S I A E. In in England, it was called the P per, uh, Performing Rights Society or P R S. So each country has its own um, performing rights agencies. We have three: uh, ASCAP, BMI, and CSA. So we're the three. Um, going on. What do you have? You can make money from sheet music sales. Oh, okay. Yeah? If your song is so popular that it actually becomes kind of like almost a standard or that it's just very popular and people want it, a lot of R&B songs are like that or pop songs. I follow, I follow some people on Instagram and they make songs and they put the sheet music for sale for like $5 online. You can download a CD app for like $5. Of their songs or other people's? Their Oh, wonderful. Their songs. Okay. That makes sense. Finding the, just finding ways, okay? Yeah, with the so internet, Jimmy's, it kind of eases the, you don't have to deal with the majors. Yeah, because yeah. The, I tell you what, you know, the thing, re, the reason why a lot of people are independent is because one, they're doing music that their major companies are ignoring. Yeah. They're doing something that's yeah. unique or fringe or it's, or you know, 
Major yeah. companies want to stay on the safe side. They want to use a formula that's been used yeah. before. They don't yeah. want nothing. Don't do anything scary. Yeah. Just stay like what we're telling yeah. you to do. Well, and if you're political or underground, yeah. Yeah. oh yes. Yeah, so you sure. can have a whole following, and you can end up making more money with your independent sales, with your shows, with your touring, on your own, than you would trying to break even at the record company who doesn't even push your record. And then it's you funny because it doesn't ever. And you never break even. You never can get a penny mm -hmm. past your advance. But they will actually want to hire and get you now, major companies, if you can do that yourself because they're like, oh, they're selling, so we want him. Yeah, or her that's or when they start. Yeah, you get their attention when you have your own, um, you know, you start Following. getting buzz in different yeah. areas. You know, you try to mm -hmm. be like in an area, you, you know, an area where you kind of saturate that area. And uh -huh. people. Most? Start buzzing about you, come to your shows and everything, and you get a following. If you have that, they're gonna come to you. Most know, artists and try to get you do, and uh, try to sign you. Yeah. Most artists do distribution deals now. That's yeah, it. That's what everything I'm else is them. But they just keep the keep indie distribution. Yeah, they just keep. Yeah. They they keep all everything. But up. the major distributors, there's only like three now. Sony. They're working with the major labels. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not. Uh, what is the distribution deal? Most. Recording artists are, are not um, going, most of them are not, most um, artists are not big enough to, to be a label by themselves um, and be distributed by the major. Yeah. They might do indie distribution. Even Prince, the new power generation with his record, record label, I think it was NPG or something like that. Or it, yeah, I think that was it. He, when he left Warner Brothers, he was saying, I'm not a slave member. He put the slave symbol on his face. And he's like, or some symbol he put on his face, and he's like, I'm. That means I'm not a slave. Or I'm, okay. You know that this is like slavery being in the record company, which it kind of. I can't equate anything to slavery because that's really working for free and no rights, no human rights. But you are treated like <laughs> you're being pissed. Whoa. And well, some people want to hold around. their language for a college. Dude. Oh. Shit. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you talk about like they have that personality. They have that whole thing. Some people are strategic with their, you know, letting the record companies uh, promote them and get them out there, make their name, and then fine, drop me because I know what I'm going to do, you know. So, you know, and some people are independent and they want to be distributed by the major. And they're like, yes, let them sign me and make that, that will help me sell more of my other records that I have on my independent, plus I can go back to that. And matter of fact, I won't even um, do a regular deal with them. I'll do a lease, a lease of my masters that I own. So they can only lease them for a certain period of time. Not forever, but for a period of time, a few years, seven years maybe, two years, three years, as long as they're going to push the record. And then it comes back to me. So there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, performance royalties, that's ASCAP, BMI, and ASAC. Remember I was talking about the performing rights agencies. And that's for radio play and collecting the license fees for um, film and television as well. Every time your, film, your music is played in a film. Um, some music supervisors are looking for songs. There's a lot of songs used. Even me, I have songs that um, the the um, Television producers were, you know, would, would um, license it, and I, that would be some income. Or uh, you would meet with the music supervisors, which are the um, the execs in the music department of the film company. So you need like, like a, a Sony. Or don't those places need like a black black license or something to play music in like the nightclubs and stuff? Oh yeah, that's something else. That's oh. just for clubs. Oh. And that, but um, ASCAP does collect for that. ASCAP, BMI, and ZSEC do collect for that, but they pay that. The clubs pay a fee, yeah, for all the music. What, what? And also, you can join ASCAP by being a writer, by, by having like a flyer saying that your music was played there, then you could join as a songwriter, you know, right. and as a publisher. Yes, Ryan? Uh, what, or, what organization are you under? I'm with ASCAP. Okay. Yes. And there are some, you can look me up, there's some stuff that people gave me credit on. Could you play one of your songs for us? 
Right now? Yes. What would you be asked for something? I'm being mine. Actually, being there's mine. some stuff that's on YouTube. BMI is free. That I, I'm on. When well, I signed up for it, that was. BMI is what? Was, was free. I don't know if it still is. To sign up? They're that's all free, but there's dues every year for. Taken out, um, but they all are. No, ASCAP was forty. That's why I didn't do ASCAP. I never. I never yeah. paid them forty dollars. Well, what? When did you join? Long, long, long. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, ASCAP. I did this like uh, maybe two years ago. ASCAP was forty. That's why I didn't do it. You have to pay again or no more? Just I have no idea. Again. I'm not on ASCAP. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm on BMI, but I don't have anything on it. I just okay. just have BMI. Okay. Yeah. You have to pay nothing, right? Just forever there? For the entrance fee, no. Well, I don't know if this is true, but people used to say that people that are doing, like, the standards and classical do well with ASCAP, and the people that are doing, like, um, popular, like, R&B and stuff, they do well with BMI. Yeah. They collect, they, they, they survey differently, and sometimes you got more money coming through BMI than you do see. So, or then you do ASCAP or the other way around. So, it would be good to have a publishing company with both one with this and one with that. It's a different publishing company. And to check which, like, your favorite artist, you can just, like, look at the CD. Because I still buy CDs. Yeah. You can still look at, you can only look at the CD. You can still buy CDs. Yeah. It's going to say the name of their publishing oh, yeah, company. Really. Yeah, yeah, you can they, see them. If they wrote the song, they're going to have a publishing company as well, and it will be ASCAP. So, it's going to be the Okay. Get out of it. How long would it take for you? Like, is there a contract you have to sign up with these guys, or like ASCAP, BMI, C's? Like, do you have to like sign a contract for how long, or just like you no, can leave whenever you want? No, it's not time limit on that. Okay, so you can leave whenever you want and go to a different one. Uh, or do you have to pay? Have you ever done you can that? Start another publishing company with another performing rights agency. I don't know how people will do if you want to change and no longer be. You, I suppose you could do. They could court you. Okay. They do more for some writers than they do for others that are like popular and making, you know, they, they might go out and out of their way to court you and offer you certain things that they, they're not offering you. Anyway, there's foreign royalties, they come from foreign song covers of your songs. So that's when you you need to Ooh. have some a sub publishing company um, or international publishers that you're assigned to that that can collect on your behalf. Is that like somebody who's like BMG or something like that? Yes, in another language in another country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, I remember I don't know if it was with you or Professor Estrada where we were talking about how um, in other countries people steal music mm-hmm. and you would never know about it. Oh, yeah. Um yeah. so my question is how would you Hire an international lawyer to distribute. Dis, uh, uh, there's a word for uh, ah, it starts with a D. But the fact of the matter is, how how would you hire someone to like, protect your music? Yeah, protect Overseas. your music internationally. If you, if you are a, a um, 
a popular, well-known artist? Yeah, you're going to have a, well, even baby artists can have a multinational publishing company. Like I had licensing deals or, or sub-publishing deals with BMG. I actually had sub-publishing deals with BMG. Mm -hmm. And they're international, they're worldwide. Okay. But they, and, and then you can also like join those performing rights agencies in other countries too. So look out for your um, that cost money? But yeah, it's better to, it's good to have, and you can do international, you can have, your publishing deal can be international mm -hmm. with one company that is international, that is multinational, or your pu publishing company can be um, for different territories. Like I have a Ugh. publishing deal with this company mm -hmm. for only for North Can only for the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's North America. Mm -hmm. That happens. And then you have someone maybe for Europe. And you might have someone for Japan. Or you might have one company that just does the whole world. Yeah, it seems like today's like the way the internet works. It's like Costco, Walmart.